Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel That Saves. Also, buttnowministry.org. But this station is dedicated to preaching the gospel, where my other station is dedicated to, buttnowministry.org, about teaching the doctrine. So this station stirs it up, hopefully gets you fired up, hopefully gets you thinking about these other pastors and other scholars and other things that are going out there in the world that they call themselves Christians, which we see on this station, according to God's perfectly preserved word, um, on a Pauline foundation dispensationally considered by rightly dividing the word of truth, we could clearly see that most that claim to be Christian may not be, most may not even be saved. But as we continue to look at R.C. Sproul's book on the Lord's Prayer, as we look at it dispensationally, we know that R.C. Sproul is a Calvinist. We know he may even be a covenant theologian. We know from these past studies that he leans on the Catholic, the Roman Catholic teachings and doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church. And we know that he is not a Bible believer. He, has, he endorses the ESV, which removes the name of the Lord Jesus Christ more than 200 times. It does not have the word doctrine in it. It does not have the word perfectly preserved in it. It does not have the words Calvary in it. It does not have the word Lucifer in it. It does not have the word dispensation in it. And it does not have the word rightly divide in it. So there's so many things R.C. Sproul will not teach, will never teach, because he does not have a Bible that has it in it. He has a translation that does not have it in it. So you cannot teach something you don't have. Okay? And we have a Bible that we believe, and we have... The Bible that says we are in the dispensation of grace according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25. We know that because we can rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2, 15. And we know that Paul is our wise master builder, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. And Paul instructs us according to the revelation of the mystery, according to his gospel that's only found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, he declares it's the gospel which he preaches unto us, by which also ye are saved, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel that saves us today. It is not Acts 2.38. It is not repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This was Peter preaching to unbelieving Israel for killing their Messiah. That's why they had to repent. That's why they had to believe in Jesus' name. And notice, they only get sins remitted, not completely forgiven like we do in the dispensation of grace. Ephesians 1.7, Colossians 2.14, and 2 Corinthians 5.17-21 confirms that we are completely forgiven of all our trespasses. God is not counting one trespass against us today. And if you trust the gospel, the grace of God, not the gospel of the kingdom, you are saved. And if you mix both, like I heard in a message the other day where the pastor said, and he shouldn't even call himself a pastor, he needs to quit his job and work at a car wash and do an honest day's work. Because he was telling his congregation that they're all seated in heavenly places, and then he called them a royal priesthood. That would be violating Ephesians 1.10. That would be a violation of Romans 11.6. That would be a violation of Romans 16, verses 17 and 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. It's a complete violation of Scripture. Mixing law and grace, prophecy with the mystery, Israel with the body of Christ. You cannot do that. God gives us stern warning not to do that. And this guy does it. Most pastors do it all day long. And that is why most churchgoers will end up in hell. But they'll be water baptized, but they'll have given all their life's worth to these people, not knowing their Bible, rightly divided, 
will send their soul to hell. Not knowing the gospel, the grace of God that saves them, excluding their works, excluding their boasting, excluding their selves, and excluding their righteousness, excluding the law. You cannot add anything that Christ did. You cannot add anything to the death, burial, and resurrection. You cannot add anything for the payment of sin. You cannot add your water baptism plus Christ dying for your sin. You cannot add your tithing plus, di plus Christ dying for your sin. You cannot add your healing, your water baptism, your tongue talking, your miracles, your prophetic baloney to what Christ did for you on Calvary's cross. If you do, that is why you're going to end up in hell. Okay? So trust Christ dying for your sins. Trust that and your faith will be counted as righteousness. Okay? Your faith will be counted as righteousness. Romans chapter 4 verse 5. But to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. In Ephesians 1, 7, Colossians 1, 14, and Colossians 2, 13, all your trespasses are forgiven. Okay, so, so much for 1 John 1, 9, the Christian bar of soap, confessing your sin so you're forgiven of your sin. That's because you're in the wrong dispensation. That's because you think you're Israel. That's because you think Israel's covenant is for you. And that's because you think all the promises that God gave you Israel is for you. Well, you're wrong and you're going to end up in hell. So get it right. That's why this station is on the internet it's to help you get it right so now let's see what rc sproul says is the will of god today in part five we covered what the will of god is today it is not anything in the red letters it is not anything from hebrews to revelation it is not anything from genesis to the cross it is not anything from acts one through one through eight none of that is the will of god today what oh my gosh well, what's the will of God? I'm always in the red letters. My pastor always tells me to follow Jesus in the red letters, but we can never do it. We can never keep all the commandments, but my pastor keeps telling me to do it. I've never sold all my possessions, but my pastor keeps telling me to do it. My pastor asks me for money every Sunday, but he tells me that I can ask and I will get anything I ask for in Matthew chapter 7. I don't understand all this. None of it makes sense. That's because your pastor doesn't know what he's teaching. Okay, In the dispensation of the grace of God, the will of God is to see all men saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. To see all men saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. But let's see what R.C. says. Let's see if he misses anything. Well, on page 479 in the Kindle edition, that's what I use to um, do this study, he says, your will be done is a petition. This is nowhere in the Bible, but you know where it's at? It's in the Catholic Encyclopedia. R.C. gives us three points about the will of God. Number one, R.C. says it is what we call the sovereign, efficacious will of God. And sovereign and efficacious, efficacious are not in the Bible. So where does he get that from? If it's not in the King James Bible, where does he get this word sovereign from? And by the way, if you're using one of those translations and not a Bible, like the New International Version, they took the Word of God out, G-O-D, capital G-O-D, and replaced it with this word, sovereign, which is not the word God, okay? R.C. says, when the Bible speaks of the will of God in this sense, it is describing the will that causes whatever he decrees to come to pass. So whatever it is. God's will is whatever it is, you guys. So that's going to help you out today, isn't it? It's whatever you want it to be. When God willed the universe to be created and said, let there be light, that expression of his sovereign will was instantly fulfilled. Oh, wow. Really? Really, R.C.? So let's take a look at the verses in Genesis. Does God mention his will at all? Let's see. Genesis chapter 1, verses... 2 through 10. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. 
and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God, and God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering togethers of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. I didn't see anything mentioned about God's will. Did you? I think R.C. is seeing things. Let's see what point number two is. The Bible speaks of the will of God with respect to what we call his preceptive will. The preceptive will has to do with his law and commandments. The precepts he issues to regulate behavior of his creation. It is the will of God that you have no other gods before him, that you honor your father and mother, that you remember the Sabbath day, and so forth. Wow! All 613 points of law is the will of God today. R.C., do you remember what James said? James 2.10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And what does Paul say about putting people back under the law? Which is only the Old and New Testament, and that was only given to the children of Israel. Exodus 19 confirms that and Jeremiah 31, and Ezekiel 36, and Hebrews chapter 8 confirms that the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, the Old and New Testament, were only given to Israel. But he's telling us that that's the will of God today for us? Isn't Israel fallen today, Romans 11, 11? Galatians 4, 9, Galatians 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 says about Paul gives us stern warnings about putting people back under Israel's law. But now, after that you've known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And by the way, we were never entangled to begin with. We were strangers to the law and the covenant, Ephesians chapter 2.12. We were enemies, Romans 5.10, not God's friends. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit, profit you nothing. So being circumcised are those under the law. And R.C.'s telling you that the will of God today is to be under the law. And Paul's saying that will profit you nothing. Because that's because we're in the dispensation of grace. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So R.C. is telling you that you got to get circumcised and be a debtor to the whole law. That's the will of God today. Christ has become of no effect unto you then. He's made the cross of Christ of no effect. R.C. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Romans 11.6 says you cannot mix both. Here it is again. You cannot mix both. Law and grace works in grace can't do it for we though the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith for in jesus christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you that would be our c a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump by the way the will of god is never mentioned in the ten commandments as our c prescribes why did God give Israel the Ten Commandments? Paul tells us. We get definition according to the revelation of the mystery. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. That seed, singular, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Romans 3.20, Therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. That law today just gives us knowledge of sin. That's it. That's the function of the law today. It's our tutor and governor. The Bible, it's amazing when people are not Pauline. It's amazing when they don't understand the revelation of the mystery. It's amazing that, I wonder if R.C. even saved. 
Number three, the Bible speaks of the will of God in terms of his basic disposition or inclination. In this sense, God's will has to do with what is pleasing or displeasing to him. Let me illustrate how a verse of scripture can be interpreted differently if we apply these different nuances of meaning. So God's will has to do with what is pleasing or displeasing to him. I hope to God, according to R.C. Sproul, you're pleasing God today, right now. Because that's the will of God today. So is the will of God keeping the commandments? Is the will of God pleasing or displeasing him? Or is the will of God just in Genesis? Because those are the three R.C. Sproul gave us. R.C. does not understand that there are only three ways to interpret Scripture. He doesn't understand that there's three ways to only interpret Scripture. Historical, spiritual, and doctrinal. Oh, he's using an ESV. The word doctrine isn't in it. So how is he going to teach the three ways to interpret Scripture? He's not. The Bible says the Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And he gets this out of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, with emphasis added. Emphasis added, 2 Peter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Okay, this is what the Bible says. Okay, so what's the Lord not slack in? His promise. Who got the promises? Israel, right? As some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is the Lord. This is Peter talking to those concerning his promise. And who's Peter a minister of? Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, we get definition of who Peter is a minister of and to in Matthew chapter 10, right? He was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and he's a minister to the circumcision. So that would leave us out. No, remember, Peter is preaching the guilt of the cross to Israel. Peter is a minister to the circumcision. This verse would not be toward the body of Christ. We are not part of Israel's promises. Notice, too, all the words R.C. deleted from that verse. Nice emphasis. He did not include slack concerning his promise. And that takes away the context of the verse. Because you know who the promises were given to. It was given to Israel. Acts 2.38 and Ephesians 2.12, right? Contrary to one another. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what Peter said to Israel in Acts chapter 2. Not the body of Christ. The body of Christ was not present yet, not until the Apostle Paul gets saved. Seven chapters later, okay? Ephesians 2.12. That at that time, this is Paul talking about the body of Christ. Paul talking about people who were not under the covenant. At that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. We are going to get a new body, not based on our repentance, but according to the finished work on Calvary's cross. But R.C. Sproul says... The will of God is what we do to please or displease Him. So pleasing Him would be to repent. Well, in Acts chapter 2 and in 2 Peter, we are to repent. Those people, Israel, are to repent for killing the Messiah. That's why they had to repent. What do we have to do today in the dispensation of grace? We have to trust the finished work on Calvary's cross. 2 Corinthians 4.16 For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Moreover, brethren, 1 Corinthians 15.1-4 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. Like I had mentioned in some of my other messages, they always leave out verse 2 on a lot of these Christian websites. They tell you it's the gospel, but they don't tell you it's how you're saved. They take the verse out. 
Verse 3, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And verse 4, that He was buried and that He rose again according to the third day, according to the Scriptures. Notice that word repent is not there. Then our C goes to say that God does not will that any should perish in the sovereign efficacious sense. Then it must be the case that none perish. Our C leaves out that this perishing is avoided based on repentance. Ours is not. Ours is based according to our faith. These are R.C.'s three points. Did R.C. not forget one? What about the one in the dispensation of grace of God? God's will for today. If you did not notice, R.C. only mentioned Israel's program according to his emphasis, not the Bible. According to the ESV. According to a translation. This is God's will today according to the revelation of the mystery. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. God's will today is to have all men be saved. Now you know why God made you an ambassador, a minister of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Thanks again for joining me. As we continue through our study, we are going to go through... Part 7, which is, give us this day our daily bread. Thanks again for listening. Email me through my website at buttonowministry.wix.com slash buttonowministry. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.